Uh, I'm Adam Woodley. This is wide open design and crane axle. And this is the Redneck Rocket Ship. The Rocket Ship is a buggy that we designed at Wide Open Design to compete in rock racing all around the U.S. When I say rock racing, I'm talking about Southern Rock Racing, the Outlaw Series, Pro Rock, big, big hill climbs, high speed rock racing. They've developed the courses now to where they've got a lot of tight turns, big hills, and rock ledges. What we did is we sat down and said, we need a flagship for wide open design. We need a flagship for crane axle. Tell people what we're doing and why we're doing it. So what better way than to build a buggy that, that goes out and competes every weekend with the guys that are in the sport. We wanted something that was really low slung. That's the first thing you're gonna notice about the buggy is it says really low. We wanted that thing that whenever you put it on a side hill or climbing really steep hills that it would have that low center of gravity to keep it planted on the ground. So good suspension travel in the back. It's got trailing arms in the front. The shocks are mounted one to one. Wanted a good shock package on this thing. Wanted coilovers and bypasses from Radflow. Uh, took all the variables that we knew we wanted. We knew we had to have that big V8 power. This thing ended up with a supercharged V8 in it. And then match everything else put it in that package and lay it out. To do that and go outside of the box like we did, we knew that we had to spend a lot of time designing this thing. So we just kind of made the decision early on that we were gonna design every part of it in CAD. If we bought a part, we were reverse engineering, making a drawing of it, putting it in CAD. After we had all of our parts assembled in the CAD drawing, we could place everything exactly where we wanted it. And then we started actually designing the chassis around it. So we actually placed axles, suspension links, engine, driver, transmission, transfer case, everything that was unknown, we put it into place, shuffled all that around, and then we designed the chassis around that. And that's when we ended up with something that was that's out of the box because we could look at it before it was actually happening. And we moved it a lot. We also wanted to make sure that Every component on this thing is something you can buy right here at Wide Open Design. There's nothing that we bought and said, okay, we're buying this. We don't generally sell it because it's on a race car. That's absolutely not the way it is. You can buy everything that's here right across the counter, call and order it up or look on our website. That was a big thing to us. We said, we wanted to use the parts we believe in and assemble them in the way that we believe in assembling them and that's using the right part for the right thing. Once we had all our parts gathered up that we knew we were gonna use, there were just a few bits to the puzzle that weren't there. So we actually came in and manufactured some new stuff for crane axle and wide open design that are the very first ones that were ever built are on this buggy. So that's gonna be an exciting part for us to be able to be a shop, have a good test bed for all of our products right here on the roof send them out, race them, test them, bring them back, look and see how they did, improve on them, or call them good to go when they're ready to go out to the customers for the masses. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand up, walk around and show you guys pretty much piece by piece what makes up the rocket ship. All right, guys, I'm gonna run through this thing and tell you front to back what all's in this buggy. I love when people will point out each individual component that it took to make a full build, and that's what I'm gonna do for you guys now. So I'm just gonna start right here in the front. We've got a worn RC9 winch. We used the short drum winch because we actually moved the frame rails in to clear the bypass tubes, and that made us want to use the short drum winch. We've been using worn winches on, I'm pretty sure, every turnkey buggy we've ever done. Just a great product that's always there. A lot of your competition style rock bouncers have went away from running any kind of winch at all. But let's be real, that's one reason we built a two-seater, so we would go out trail riding, have fun. We also want to do some bounty hill type stuff, and I want the thing to be hooked up and ride itself when it needs to. So we decided to put a winch in there and went with the worn deal. We'll drop right down, talk about 
front axles. Front axles, crane axles, written on the side of the buggy. That's what we're here to talk about. This is what a good rock bouncing axle will look like. 14 bolt, it's got three and a half half wall tubes pushed into it. 40 spline spool, a Yukon ring and pinion. This one has a 513 in it. 40 spline inner shafts, big two and a half ton belt axle, 47 spline two inch outer axle shaft. <clears throat> Crane magnum knuckles. Then we drop over to Overson spindles and wheel hubs. We machine the brake hat and it's got a lightweight three inch thick rotor and a lightweight caliper. And it's just our big brake kit that we sell. So got a two and a half inch by 10 inch ram from PSC full kit on here from PSC, turn this thing, and, and then our 7075 inch and a half diameter tie rods. So coming up here, you can notice down low, we dropped the shock height instead of mounting on top of the axle to the front of the axle. It's vulnerable in the rocks, vulnerable for getting hit, but we dropped that shock tower as low as we could to try to be able to see out of the buggy. Uh, rock bouncers and this kind of car really gets a bad name for not being able to see it all out of. We really tried to work on visibility. The seat sitting super low in the back of the buggy, so we knew that visibility was going to be limited anyways, but we tried to get every bit of clearance we could. And dropping this three inch five two bypass down, and then we raised the two inch core carrier up, it made for a good level shock hoop. And it just looks better being this way, but Talking about the shocks, Rad Flow, three inch, five tube bypass, a two inch coil carrier, both of them with reservoirs on them. We did a remote reservoir hose in the front, because if you don't, the can sticks out the front of the shock. So we opt in for the remote reservoir where we can hide it in the buggy. But on the back, we've got the piggyback reservoir. So big LS engine, it's a supercharged LS engine. We wanted a lot of power out of this thing and that's what we've, uh, we decided on there. Turbo 400 transmission, Atlas transfer case. Coming right on along and around, we've got our 70, 75 link bars, all inch and a quarter rod ends, uppers and lowers all the way around on this thing from QA1. Hydro Bruce brakes, something that's not really ran a lot on rock bouncers. A lot of uh, trail riding rock crawler guys were running them but I'm pretty excited to bring this into it because this is the best brakes that we've ever been able to put on a buggy. We're running a TC pump that we actually mounted low on the passenger side of the engine. We did that first on this buggy and then we've actually turned that into a product that we released as well. So the TC pump mounts down low, passenger side of the engine, and it's running off of where the AC compressor would be running on a regular LS engine. So it's back there by itself. But that TC pump is running through the hydro boost and then it runs the rear steer. Then we've got a big billet body CBR pump for the front steering, running it through the spike valve that PSC is selling now with a pressure relief. So all the PSC stuff, two reservoirs, two independent systems are actually on two different belts. We really want them on two different belts. That way, if you ever did sling one belt, you hopefully will be able to drive with the front or the rear to get through the rest of the course. Custom built a set of two inch headers, uh, all out of stainless, TIG welded together, V bands, everything else. Pretty cool stuff there. Moving right on back, this right here is kind of where the design and engineering of this buggy really got difficult was setting the buggy down this low with seating arrangement and to have foot room. Uh, spent a lot of time in front of the cab screen, designing, redesigning. I think we went through two different floorboard renditions, maybe three, before we actually settled on one where we had enough leg room that it was really comfortable with to ride in all day. But we actually played with it enough to where it's really comfortable to set in. You've got more of a straight up and down feel to the buggy and it makes you just feel more in control. We went with a, a PRP Alpha seat. Whenever I called PRP and I talked to Aaron, the owner over there, and I was like, Aaron, if you were building a rock bouncer today, what would you put in there for a seat wide? And he said, I'd try this new composite seat, the Alpha. And that's what we decided in on. It's a really tight seat. It jams you down in there and it holds you well. So we're really excited about running that, running their seat belts as well. We've got coarse Radflow shocks in the back. 
this time we're going with a 14 inch 2.0 coilover, 16 inch 3.0 bypass. And then we've machined out this billet 7075 trailing arm. That's a solid piece of billet that we machine in house on our Haas machines. Really kind of wanted to do the, the 7075 trailing arm. More of kind of, can we do it? It's pretty awesome. We threw some 3D profiling in it. I didn't want you to look down and think that it had been like a, a fabricated out arm or anything. So the 3D profiling and all that, there's a lot of time in it, but it was a, a really pretty cool and exciting project now that we've designed them. These are the first set. We've actually got a few of them on buggies and they're working pretty good. Griffin radiator, we've been using those guys for a long time, having really good luck out of them. The back, Axle is a mirror of the front crane 14 bolt. You can go right to crane's website, price this axle out just like it is, minus all the brackets and tabs on it. Radflow bump stop, that was a four inch travel bump stop. We've already went in and made a two inch travel. We realized that a lot of times the little two inch just rides better. And we're looking for more of a safety whenever it fully bottoms out, not to bend or put any pressure on the trailing arm. But I like the four inch body because if you do want to go back to a three or a four, the availability is already there in the mount. So if you put a little small can on there, you can't really go to the four inch bump stop, but you can go from a four inch down to a two inch. That's the reason we use those and actually come in and already put a, a spacer in them. Wide open design limit straps, of course. We actually mounted the sway bar on the rear axle because whenever you're putting coilovers and bypasses and rear steer, you're just totally out of room. So mount the sway bar to the rear axle gives that tire to come in here and turn. The aluminum fuel cell we built, it's about 15 gallons, welded inside and out, gusseted it up, sideways and front to back. Um, and that's, uh, that's a new design that we're really trying out. We've got that in a few buggies now. All right, guys, that's it. It's the Redneck rocket ship. We're pretty excited to get this thing dirty. Um, Ready to see how it does on the hills, in the rocks, everything else. I'm excited to get back out to the races and see a bunch of people that I haven't seen in a while and get crane axle in front of all the guys at the races and everything else and give back a little bit to the whole off-road community. I really do appreciate everybody that's helped me out, all the guys at the shop that really poured their their time, their blood, their sweat, their tears in this thing. Everybody in here helped us out with it and I can't thank them enough. I'm so happy with how everything turned out. But we're looking forward to next year racing. If you guys are online or whatever else, like us, follow us, subscribe, everything else. We can't wait to go to the races and see how this thing does.